So this is the fastest way that I've found to create captions on Premiere Pro. So if you're looking for speed and a bunch of new creative options like this style here in just a few clicks, take a look. So with this process, all I need to do is hit this button here, captions, and then select a preset template that I made earlier, which I'll show you how to do after this demo. I'll go for popular Montserrat Red to start off with choose accurate or fast transcription in this case i'll keep it on accurate then hit the create button and it will not only transcribe the audio into words but put the ready-made captions on the timeline ready to go you just need to press play and it's already there if you determine to be rich you'll be rich everything is in your control and that's it actual captions done for the whole timeline which is incredible compared to the previous caption process in premiere pro and now your captions are in place you can tweak them redesign them or go for another preset just click on style here and look through the presets and maybe we'll try this one i believe this one's got some movement to it so as we play it back you'll see it kind of floats around and i've said it once and i'll say it again and this didn't involve any keyframes let's go for another one this one randomly rotates on every line and you can set that rotation to extreme or subtle and the main point is you won't have to keyframe this yourself you become what you think about thoughts lead to actions and one more let's see how this looks you can very much determine your destiny so that's how quick we can switch things up using presets. And the great thing about this is we can edit the style of all the captions while they're on the timeline instantly by going to settings. If we want to change the color of the active word here in the active word section, let's change that to yellow. If you can, and you could do that with any of the settings at all. So let's create a preset or you might call it a caption template from scratch now, but you're probably wondering what this window is that I'm using. So this is a plugin called Brevity and it's basically just an answer to many of the limitations that unfortunately Premiere Pro does have when it comes to making captions. So as an example, captions like this just wouldn't be worth making in Premiere Pro because it would take too long. So Brevity expands the captions options that you have in Premiere Pro and it just saves loads of time. And not only will Brevity speed up the caption process, it can also use AI to cut your long form content into edited short form content for you as well as search the internet download and add relevant footage straight to your timeline along with emojis or gifs if you want it to and that's all without you having to do any of that yourself which is pretty wild and again you have full control over all this with the settings which i have found really user friendly other things to note is that brevity detects and translates into over 100 languages and they state that their transcription is more accurate than premiere pros itself they also do a seven day free trial i'll leave the link in the description if you give it a go let me know what you think but back to captions for a sec you don't have to make the templates or presets yourself because it comes with an extensive library which constantly updates but if you do want to make your own caption presets this is how it's done so we'll create the captions like we did before but this time without choosing the preset and you can see it's given us two lines per caption as default but we can change that by hitting this button here I'll knock it up to four just to demonstrate. It's nice and quick. And the difference between Brevity and the old Premiere Pro process is that without Brevity, when you set up lines and characters in Premiere Pro, it's before the captions are created. So you won't be able to see what it looks like on the display. Plus Brevity gives you as many lines as you like. Whereas the standard process, you only get single or double. And once you've chosen it, you can't go back on that unless you restart the whole process again. Whereas with Brevity, you can change it at any time and see what's happening on the display as you change the settings, which makes it feel really hands-on and flexible. From here, we can go to the style settings by clicking on style first up we can change the position of the captions as default it starts on the bottom other options are middle or top and the gap here between the caption and the top of the screen is called padding and we can change that here now you can see with no padding it butts right up to the top of the screen but i'll undo that and select middle i'll get rid of the padding or middle and the next up is scale which of course is the size of the text let's try 150 maybe 200 okay now to change the font i'm going to head down to font and i'm going to change that to bebas new as i've noticed that seems quite popular online at the moment okay so these settings that are visible at the moment they affect all the captions as a whole but underneath there's another two sections one's called active and one's called highlight we'll come back to highlight later but active allows you to style the word that's being spoken by the subject shown here in yellow and the beauty of brevity is that it's already programmed this in without brevity you'd have to go through each individual word yourself and highlight each one if you wanted the words to be highlighted as the subject speaks the amount of time that saves is insane so now we can just focus on how it looks so i'm going to change the color first i'll set that back to white because i'm going to create a bubble background for the active word we can do that here under word bg click the drop down make sure it's enabled choose a color i'll go for a red and if you click the drop down again we can see the settings for the background and i might just increase the y padding here to make it taller and a bit more x padding to make it wider and maybe i want a thicker stroke for the active text so we can set that here and increase it from 5 to 10. okay let's see how we're looking it begins in the mind 
maybe you can con okay so i'm just going to finish this off by adding a bit of drop shadow drop shadow is just here click the box to enable it i'll increase the softness to expand the shadow cool and i think we're done Things lead to behaviors so now that we've made our style, we can save that as a preset template by clicking new here so that we can reuse that style on any project at any time with one click. To demonstrate that, I'll click a style I made earlier. It just loads up. Things lead to behaviors. Behaviors leads to lifestyle. And then we'll go back and reload the one we just made. So I'll change the drop down to recent. There it is, top left. Hit that and we got it back. Actions lead to behavior. There's loads of effects in these settings that are really easy to use. Just a click and a slider and the whole thing is affected. As an example, here's one I really like. It's called Wiggle. You just click it, adjust the settings, and it gives all your captions that floaty effect without you having to have touched any keyframes at all. You can control and wield your mind. You can very much determine your destiny. So that in itself has saved an absolute ton of time. And of course, you don't always need it in active mode. Sometimes you might just want to highlight particular words. So I'll untick active, and you might prefer the words to appear word by word rather than line by line. So to do that, we just need to untick following. Very much determine your destiny. You can also rotate each line differently without having to keyframe anything by turning on random rotation, and that could be subtle or more extreme depending on how you set it. Control and wield your mind. You can very much determine your destiny. Now let's look at highlight text as opposed to active text. If you prefer to highlight specific words rather than every word, you can do that here. And we can choose which words we want to highlight by going back to the transcript. I'll click on the star here, which is the highlight tool, and then click on any word that I want to highlight. Let's see how that looks. So everything begins in the mind. If you can control and wield your mind, you can very much. Or we might want to change the color or use the skew function to make it italic. Everything begins in the mind. If you can control and wield. And as with the other two sections, you have full control over the animation of these highlighted texts. Pop in, zoom in, slide in, plenty of creative options. Let's go for zoom. I'll just increase the intensity on this and lower the speed. Begins in the mind. If you can control and wield your mind, you can very much. The way brevity works makes it really easy to experiment with so you can come up with something unique in seconds. Also, regarding the transcript, correcting spellings is easy. Just hit the T, go to the word, correct the spelling, and you're good to go. And this next feature is particularly cool. Say you wanted a particular line to end at the end of a sentence, rather than showing the beginning of the next sentence, you can easily fix that with this feature. So for instance here, I'd like to move the words so and if to the next caption and end this caption with the word pro. To do this, I just select this paragraph icon and as I hover over the lines, you can see a small arrow there, which either points up or down depending on where you are in the sentence. Click it to nudge words onto the previous caption or the following caption. If you wanted to do this without brevity, you'd have to go into each caption and then remove the words that you don't want on that caption. But then you'd have to go into the next caption and retype the words that you deleted from the previous caption. Not only that, but you'd have to then resize each clip to make sure each caption falls in line with the audio. It's certainly not a quick process, so Brevity have done a great job here to fix that. You just nudge things around with the arrows, you don't have to touch the timeline or the clips, and Brevity syncs it all for you. So that's captions, let's talk about AutoCut. What is AutoCut? This is where Brevity uses AI to automatically cut your long form content into short form segments and without having to do it yourself. So particularly if you're any kind of social media creator, this is a great way to supercharge your output. In this case, I've grabbed a two hour long Stephen Bartlett interview of Alex Hormozzi to see what Brevity could cut out of that. With the footage in the sequence, just press auto cut where you can set parameters for Brevity's AI to start editing with. So I'll start with the aspect ratio and pick nine by 16 as I want it to produce vertical videos. And then we have options here, fit blur background or fit no background or fill. So I'm gonna go for fill because I want the footage to fill the entire screen. And then of course you can choose the caption preset and you'll have the whole Brevity library which constantly updates or of course your own presets and I'll keep the transcription on accurate. We'll give it a few tasks, in this case to remove silences, suggest emojis and suggest clips, aka stock footage and then press create. What it will do after it's gone through the whole transcript of the long form video is use AI to select interesting content which it will then edit into smaller segments. And just in case you missed that because it still blows my mind, Brevity will actually edit for you and not just one edit, it will give you a collection of edits so that will save hours on end. As you can see, it's edited new sequences, all short form and in vertical format. It's also inserted emojis here in green and stock footage in purple. 
So if I click on the stock footage on the purple clip here, we'll go into the settings and increase it to full size as well as give it some animation. To do that, we just need to go to the Brevity Media Browser. There's the clip it's chosen on the top right and then click on position down to screen fit. And then we have a few options there. So I'll choose full screen and then we can set the animation as to how the stock footage will come in. It's already set to intro. So on the left, I'll move down to slide as I want it to slide in. I'll choose slide right slow. And if I select constant, I could add some movement if I wanted the stock footage to float around, which is quite useful for emojis, but I just want it to slide in and slide out. So I'll leave that and then move on to outro. It has list view as well as grid view. And I prefer the grid view as these visual representations show you how the animation will be applied to the footage. So I'll select slide left slow. And if you hit the settings, you get a selection of velocity curves and you can play about with the speed and intensity to get the animation just right. And then we just press update and then play. But like the biggest debt all of us pay is ignorance. And so I, I heard this close. Good. And we just done all that without leaving Premiere Pro itself, which has cut out all the hard work involved in adding stock to videos, like using other platforms, downloading, moving files, importing, keyframing. It all adds up, particularly if you're doing it a lot. Reverdy does all that for you. So it just saves hours of time. As another example, we'll do the same with emojis. I'll just move to this next stock clip where I can see there's an emoji there as well in green. And this works in exactly the same way. Go to position, for emojis, choose caption relative, and then you've got a few positions. So I'm gonna go for below captions and I'll set the intro and outro animations like we did with the stock footage. I'll click update and then play that back. So you wrote $50,000 on the whiteboard and then you wrote. And you don't have to always go with the sections that Brevity has selected. You can highlight your own sections and add some stock to that. If I wanted to quickly add some stock to this section here, if you are angry, use it. If you are sad, use it. We just need to click onto the transcript and then go to the highlight tool and then drag over the section we want to add the stock to. Brevity will then open up the media browser and we can allow it to generate its own stock or we can search for stock ourselves. So same process, browse through. I think I'll select this one and then I'll just check the format. That looks like the right format and I'll click on continue and there it is on the timeline in purple. Now we can look at the animation settings. First up, I'll make it full screen Then I'll click on fade and go down to the grid view. Choose a slow fade in then move to outro, back to fade and then choose a slow fade out and then click on update. Let's play that. If you are angry, use it. If you are sad, use it. Because like, what else are you going to do with it? So that's a few basics on how to use Brevity. I'm going to continue using it for sure as it saves me so much time. And if you want to test it, you can try it yourself for free. I'll leave the link in the description. If you give it a go, let me know what you think. And for more tips and tricks on efficiency in Premiere Pro, stay locked to Solid Coast. See ya.